little to nothing is known about the enigmatic ancient race known to humanity by the name of the Engineers. Due to their disappearance from the Middle Heavens around 2000 years ago, all we really have left on the Engineers is the technology they once possessed, left to linger across the stars. So in today's data log, I wanted to analyse the Engineers via the technology they have left for us to discover. The Engineers were an extremely technologically advanced race, a superior species, no doubt. Melding their technology with both aspects of biology as well as with their culture. Over the countless eons of their existence, the Engineers have worked to perfect their technology, and we have a number of artefacts to examine this. The first and possibly most enigmatic technology of the Engineers is that of their seed ship. This gigantic vessel would seemingly be oval in shape, similar to a flying saucer. And while it's presumed these details are correct, it's hard to be sure as there has only ever been given reference uh, through stories passed from the Engineers to humanity about this vessel. While mysterious, the vessel likely has a specific ritualistic role for the Engineers, as they would seem to have used it uh, billions of years ago to deliver sacrificial individuals to planets where life could be seeded, much like on the ancient Earth. Music is a vital piece of engineer society. Studies into their past suggest that engineer as studies into their past suggest that the engineers as a species are able to uh, see melodies as actual colors, shapes, and words. Due to how important music would seem to be in their culture, the engineers have created their technology with that thought in mind in fact becoming a key aspect of operating their technology. The engineers utilise a number of flutes in order to operate all kinds of technologies across their galactic empire. Different flutes for different tech and different tunes for different commands. Some operated doorways, some operate lighting and biosuits, whilst others activated navigational controls and piloting operations within their starcraft such as the Juggernauts. An android or human possessing a particular talent for music could conceivably learn to whistle the appropriate tunes to activate or operate engineer technology. But remember that this is easier said than done. Nothing short of a master of musical talents would be required to succeed in doing so. An engineer's biosuit is yet to be fully understood by us at the project. Theories suggest the biopressure suit enhances the wearer's agility and physical strength. They also appear to allow the engineer uh, to process toxins from the external environment into safe respiratory gases to keep the wearer alive. A very handy uh, piece of tech indeed. And obviously these biosuits act as powerful armour against ballistic weaponry and presumably some types of energy based weapons. Helmeted, one of these suits can keep an engineer alive in the vacuum of space. Scientists also believe that an engineer could survive in an extremely toxic environment for at least an hour without the need of the helmet as the biosuit will breathe and filter for them. The biosuit also acts as an advanced med kit, repairing damage to the engineer's body and providing the wearer with uh, limited sustenance. The biosuits are also designed to both interact and fuse with aspects of their other technologies such as with their space vessels and with their form of hypersleep chambers. The engineer rebreather tech allows an engineer individual to breathe oxygen when placed within their cryostasis sarcophagi. The engineer rebreather is essentially a face mask possessing a long proboscis like tube that travels down the wearer's throat to supply oxygen directly to their lungs. The sarcophagi of the engineers are large coffin-like translucent pods that essentially make up their version of classic hypersleep chambers like those used by humanity across the middle heavens. We are uncertain of exactly how these sarcophagi work, however we do know that they are very advanced capable of keeping an individual alive for hundreds and even thousands of years. 
One setback is that in order to survive this long, the rebreather is generally needed in order to keep the body in a complete stasis. Entering the stasis without the rebreather would generally mean that you would still be placed in stasis, but it wouldn't be as effective. This likely means that the rebreather has many more abilities than just simply maintaining an individual's respiration. The engineers have a lot in the way of difference to humanity. Yet one thing we have learned that we have in common is our need to record. The engineers record everything. The engineers don't use camera technology though. Instead, the engineers possess some kind of advanced, almost magical, memory gel. This gel coats the interiors of their ships and installations. It is able to record, store and play back events that occur within its vicinity within a 3D format. This is conjured in the form of a fuzzy blue particle mass that clumps together and moves about uh, to create a 3D representation of the events it has witnessed. Within their installations, using a memory gel, they coat the interiors of the walls and the ceiling. The gel would appear to always be recording, and with just the right electrostatic current, it can be made to play back specific events. This primary source has been crucial in learning about and understanding engineers of the past. This holographic memory gel would have to be one of the most alien technology forms at their disposal. The array is the engineer's second form of holographic technology. It is specifically used during and within the navigational areas of installations and starcraft. The engineers, having traversed deep into our Milky Way galaxy, have some of the most extremely detailed and interactive holographic maps of it. The array Bringing all of these concepts together allows a viewer to simply pluck a photonic representation of a world or planet or moon or whatever it is that they're hoping to travel to out of the air and have all its data, statistics and coordinates feed directly into the navigational systems of a given vessel. The arrays are located on the bridge of an engineer's ship and sometimes serve as observatories or command centres within engineer installations on the surface of various worlds. Now it's time we talk about the engineer's juggernauts. These massive asymmetrical horseshoe shaped craft appear more grown than built, possessing a high amount of biomechanical technology. Each juggernaut contains at least one massive cargo bay with an ample delivery system for the engineer's genetic accelerant weapon. Each vessel also houses a navigational array uh, center at its heart, where you will also find the piloting platform. The piloting platform itself contains a number of navigator slash operation chairs with a total of four sarcophagi on the top of the raised circular platform. At the centre of the platform there exists a retractable piloting chair able to interface with and take command of all the functions and technologies within its respective juggernaut vessel. The chair is able to operate with such power due to its ability to bond both physically and presumably mentally with its pilot. Where biology and mechanics fuse together to create the perfect pilot. The Juggernaut class has been long theorised to be a vessel of war, a machine designed for sole purpose, to act as a bomber for the engineer's genetic accelerant. A Juggernaut is capable of achieving FTL travel, making speeds much greater than that of anything achievable by humanity to this day. Another lesser understood vessel is that of the Mother Juggernaut. This colossal craft, shaped like a scorpion's tail, essentially acts as an engineer mothership. A defensive docking station that hovers over and protects major engineer installations and cities. How the Mother Juggernaut is able to act in defence is yet to be seen. However, it's likely that upon sensing a vessel other than that of engineer origin, it would likely enter a defensive mode and have some kind of advanced weaponry or defensive technologies in order to defend itself and the population that it safeguards. 
the juggernauts and other engineer craft would be able to dock with a mothership to replenish their fuel or energy, uh, their supplies, and to make a landing within underground storage facilities located within most engineer cities and installations. The next starship we have to talk about is one of complete mystery. The Dreadnought is something not yet encountered in the Middle Heavens. The only real evidence we have of its existence comes from partially translated hieroglyphs. These ancient sources paint the picture of a twisted, not shaped vessel, much larger than that of a juggernaut, yet fits its design philosophy. If juggernauts weren't bad enough, the dreadnoughts are believed to be even further weaponized, FTL capable craft. The engineer's steatite ampules are a group of metallic storage containers that can range in shape, height, and size. Two main forms exist, one being a sacrificial type and the other a weapons grade storage device. While the sacrificial ones resemble a bowl of sorts, the weaponized ampules stand at roughly half a meter tall and resemble urns. Each urn contains four glass conical containers, each of which in turn contain a strain of the engineer's greatest creation, the genetic accelerant called Agent AO-3959X.91-15. Hermetically sealed, the urns are designed to release the black goo, or engineer accelerant, in response to pressure, temperature, and other environmental changes. These urns are exceptionally dangerous and should be avoided at all costs. And so for now at least, that basically covers all engineer technologies discovered to have belonged or have been utilized in the past by the ancient race known as the engineers. Some of the technology amazes, others frighten. Like humanity, our creators seem to have developed technologies both for the benefit and some, more than not, the detriment of life in the universe. As the Acheron project continues to collect data on these enigmatic contraptions of the engineer race, we will be sure to keep releasing data logs to keep you all informed of the latest discoveries across the middle heavens. But in terms of our next discussion into the engineer race, we are planning to release a data log shortly after this one, uh, based on one of the engineer's greatest creations yet, which we felt warranted its own separate data log. So stay tuned for that in the future. Before you go, I wanted to let you know about the Acheron Colonial Marketplace, the one-stop shop for all Project Acheron merchandise. All proceeds go to fund our future endeavours under the project. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other data logs would you like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions to be answered, please leave them in the comments or contact me directly through the Project Acheron Discord. If you enjoyed today's segment, please leave a like and share the video. And if you really want to support what we do here and gain access to a bunch of awesome rewards, consider becoming a Project Acheron channel member, like Project Director Chris Dassinger and Team Member Raunchy. I hope to see you all here again very soon, but until then, this is the Acheron Project, signing off.